Let's start with the first upgrade option Apple offers on their website, the Nano Texture Display. In my opinion, you should seriously consider it. And I wanna take some time to talk about this because I'm seeing so much misinformation about it online. Uh, you know, things like it's less durable or it makes text blurry or reduces contrast, etc. So let me just explain it all. Nano Texture is not a coating or a film like you might find on other displays. It's actually laser etched directly onto the same glossy glass panel that's already in the MacBook. So you get millions of nano etchings that are essentially like little ridges in the glass that deflect light hitting the display off at different angles instead of being reflected right back into your eyes like a standard glossy glass panel would. So why is this important? Well, you probably buy a laptop for portability, right? So there's a pretty good chance you might use it in bright areas like outdoors or in a room with lots of natural light, for example. And it's honestly magical how much the nano texture reduces reflections and glare. You can see in these examples just how much of an effect it has. Now, some people claim that nano texture reduces sharpness, but I couldn't notice any difference using them side by side. I mean, text is just as crisp and any color or contrast differences, for example, dark colors appearing washed out or hazy, is only noticeable when viewing at an angle. But that makes no sense because you only view your laptop screen from you know, directly in front of you, right? And if you do that, there's no difference. Also, don't be worried about decreased durability. It's just as durable as the standard glossy glass. Remember, this is not a coating, so there shouldn't be any noticeable wear. And yes, you can wipe away fingerprints and smudges just as easily as the glossy panel. Also, if you select the nano texture option, it also comes with Apple's polishing cloth in the packaging. So yeah, seriously consider this upgrade. Uh, you know, unless you tend to use your MacBook in an environment where you have a lot of control over the light and the reflections won't bother you. For example, your home desk setup. And if you frequently use your MacBook at a desk, check out this 10-in-1 USB-C docking station from Anchor, who is kindly supporting my channel and sponsoring this section of the video. So one of the biggest issues with the MacBook Pro is the lack of port selection. Also, if you use it as a desk, it gets really annoying having to connect and reconnect everything every time you want to move your MacBook. Anchor's USB-C docking station solves these issues. It just sits on your desk and connects to your MacBook with a single cable, charging it with 100 watts of high-speed power delivery, and gives you access to all of the ports on the dock. You can also connect three monitors to your MacBook simultaneously by utilizing Display Link software. This is a big deal because most other docks only support up to two monitors. Now, one thing I noticed and appreciate about this dock is the power button on the front. A lot of other docks don't have this, and and it's important because at the end of the day, you don't have to unplug your MacBook to stop it from sitting on charge all night long. Just press the power button on the dock to turn everything off. So upgrade your MacBook Pro with Anchor's 10-in-1 USB-C dock by clicking the link in the description of this video. Next up, there's the $200 chip upgrade option. Now, this will give you an extra two CPU performance cores and four GPU cores. Now, I found that in my testing, it doesn't really make a noticeable difference in performance. I mean, even if you're doing something intensive like playing a game or compiling code. So unless budget is no issue and you just want the best version of the M4 Pro chip, I recommend instead using that money to upgrade the SSD or pay for the nano texture display I mentioned before. Next, should you upgrade the RAM? Well, I hope you don't mind selling a kidney because it ain't cheap. You'll notice there is no $200 option to get 36 gigabytes total. It's completely grayed out, which makes the following three options your only choices. So it's $400 minimum for more RAM, but will you see a massive increase in performance? First, let's take a look at the base model 24 gigabyte RAM option. Now to give you an idea of how capable it is, here's a pretty typical usage scenario for me personally. I have a couple of browser tabs open in Chrome, uh, about 10 in Firefox for about 15 total active browser tabs, the Mail app, Notion, a pretty large and complicated Photoshop project, and also a relatively complicated 4K video editing project actively playing. That is honestly a lot going on at once. Now you might look straight away at the memory used figure and think, oh, well, he's maxing out all of his RAM already. But macOS is designed to try and use all available RAM at all times for best performance. 
Best indicator of how much RAM you need is actually the memory pressure chart in the bottom left corner. This ranges from green, which means good, yellow, which means you're starting to stress the available RAM a little bit, and red, which means, uh, yeah, you need more RAM. You can see the memory pressure right now, and my example is green. Note that when I do have the video project open and playing on screen, you'll see my memory pressure just barely creeps up into the yellow threshold, but it's still nowhere near being maxed out. If I had 48 gigabytes of RAM, it would be a complete waste. I mean, I'd barely use maybe five gigabytes out of the extra 24 gigabytes that I just paid $400 for. Now, of course, your situation will likely be different to mine. Uh, theoretically, doubling the RAM will give you increased performance due to the way unified memory works and how it's shared between the CPU, GPU, and any open applications. But in real life, it only makes a difference in very specific circumstances, like, you know, running virtual machines or a very complicated Lightroom project, for example. I think most of you will be totally fine with 24 gigabytes. Uh, if you're not sure though, just answer this question. Will I frequently use and take advantage of the extra RAM? If the answer is no, uh, just get 24 gigabytes and don't give Apple any more of your hard earned money. Honestly, this whole 24 versus 48 gigabytes of RAM discussion is really a whole separate video though, uh, because the performance benefits really depend on the specific workflow. So I recommend researching creators that specialize in your most frequently used workflow and see what they recommend. Just remember that you cannot upgrade the RAM after the fact because it's soldered on. Moving on, is the 512 gigabyte SSD enough or should you pay 200 bucks and upgrade to the one terabyte version? In my opinion, 512 gigabytes is enough for most people. Uh, for me personally, once I installed all of my apps and downloaded some essential files and photos, I still have about 370 gigabytes left. Anything that takes up a lot of storage space like a video editing project or a huge photo library uh, just goes on an external SSD. Here's the one I currently use. It's a relatively inexpensive Thunderbolt 3 drive with insane speeds. I'll also link it down in the description. Now, all of that being said, never underestimate how much of a pain in the ass it is having to carry around and plug in an external drive all the time. So if you need more than 512 gigabytes, please just do yourself a favor and just get the one terabyte upgrade for $200. Even though Apple's upgrade pricing sucks, uh, it just beats carrying around an external drive 24 seven. The one terabyte SSD is also noticeably faster than the 512 gigabyte option in the base model. That being said, I think the sweet spot for storage upgrades is one terabyte maximum. I mean, anything above that and the prices are so insane, uh, I just don't think it's worth it unless budget is not an issue for you. If you're thinking of getting that cool space black color, my advice is to reconsider. It just gets so dirty so easily, uh, especially the trackpad and areas where you rest your palms when typing. Also, because the space black color is an anodized coating, it can actually rub or scratch off over time. And because the color of the aluminum alloy underneath is silver, it's gonna be really obvious, which is why my preference is the silver option. It's the natural color of the raw aluminum used to make the chassis. There's no you know, special coating to make it a different color. Uh, and it ages the best because if you get wear and tear or scratches, you can barely see it. Now, one of the big questions I get asked by potential M4 Pro MacBook buyers is how does it compare to previous versions? Long story short, uh, they're more similar than they are different. Same weight, dimensions, almost identical screens and port selection, etc. In fact, it's almost impossible to tell the difference between them unless you go into the About This Mac section. Realistically, the only area you'll see a noticeable difference is during anything demanding, like compiling code, rendering a video, or gaming, for example. And there can be a pretty big difference in some areas. For example, anything that relies on the CPU, the M4 Pro CPU, CPU is significantly more powerful than all other versions. And it's a similar situation with the GPU. Everything from 3D workflows to gaming will see a noticeable improvement. I actually made an entire separate video breaking down every single difference between all four Pro MacBooks. So I definitely recommend checking that out and I'll provide a link in the description. Basically, unless you can get an M2 Pro or an M3 Pro lightly used for a significant discount, uh, the M4 Pro is honestly really good value for money. Plus you get all the nice extras like being able to customize it, 
warranty, additional RAM over previous versions, and of course, that optional nano texture display upgrade. Now, if you're looking to pick up some accessories, here's what I'm currently using. None of this is sponsored, by the way. Uh, I bought it all with my own money. I'm rocking the TomTok 360 degree laptop sleeve. It's not fancy, uh, you know, it's pretty inexpensive at just 29 bucks on Amazon, uh, but it has really nice thick padding around the edges. I also highly recommend some kind of portable USB-C hub just to get access to additional ports like USB-A or Ethernet. I've had this one for four years and use it frequently. I can also use it with my iPhone, so it's kind of two birds with one stone. For desk setups, ASUS just released a 5K resolution monitor specifically designed for MacBooks. It has essentially the exact same screen as the $1599 Apple Studio display, uh, but for less than half the price. And I can just plug my MacBook into the monitor and get display, output, charging, and access to any USB devices plugged into the back of the monitor. If you'd like to see a full non-sponsored review of that new monitor, you can click here or check the link in the description.